change the world? I think we know the answer to that last question, don't we? Good morning and welcome to the Ford Foundation. Welcome to Fresh Angle on the Arts. It's, this is the first of a series of events to mark our 75th anniversary of working with visionary leaders and organizations. I'm proud, we're proud to have all of you here, so many friends here in this landmark building. This building is a piece of art. You're in art today. And it's no accident, it's no accident that we start this series of 75th anniversary conversations with a day devoted to exploring the arts. Because at a time of profound political, economic, and social transformation, at a time of palpable uncertainty about the future, the role of artists as interpreters, provo provocateurs, that's my favorite thing artists do is provoke. <laughs> Bridge builders and change makers is vital. Now, I know times are hard. But we can't forget that it is in times like these that the arts need our support most. That's why every museum, every arts institution in this town and all over the country are bursting at the seams. Culture is an oasis. Nearly five decades ago, President Kennedy spoke of the timeless connection between art and social movements. Art, he said, establishes the basic human truths which must serve as touchstones of our judgment. But he added that the artist, the artist, in being faithful to a personal interpretation of reality, becomes the last champion of the individual mind and sensibility against the intrusive society and an officious state. I, I wish sometimes I could engrave that in Washington, D.C. At the time, President Kennedy was speaking of Robert Frost. Were he to speak those words today, he would surely be speaking of the young musicians and filmmakers on the streets of Cairo and Tunis. Musicians who were creating the soundtrack of a revolution, the soundtrack of protest, creating and capturing, creating 
and capturing the aspirations of their fellow citizens. Or he might be speaking of the artist, of the Chinese artist Ai Weiwei, who accepted our invitation to be here today, but as many of you likely know, is being detained. Artists bring real issues to the surface. Artists are visionaries, and we desperately need to see what they see. I have to say, though, and this is a personal comment, art plays out, the power of art plays out at the individual level as well. And there's a message in here for Oscar. So Oscar, I just want to tell you before I get to this next part, that if I can't see you out there, but wherever you are out there, if a thin Hispanic guy shows up, maybe 17 or 18 years old in your lobby, just say hi to him. I'll explain why. <laughs> I remember, I remember Joe Papp putting his welcoming hand on my shoulder when I, as a teenager, walked into the lobby of the public. I remember sitting Saturday after Saturday in that booth on the corner of the first tier at the Metropolitan Opera, transported to a new world as a child. I remember the first time I saw Guernica in its room at MoMA, a room empty save for me. Now, those experiences might seem unremarkable to some of you, to some people. But as the son of a seamstress living in the South Bronx, those experiences made possible exclusively because of the generosity of individual donors, because of free public access programs, those experiences were transformative to me, were transformative to my life. I know personally the power of art to transform. I know personally the power of art to create futures of infinite possibility. Every day, every day around the world, courageous artists and cultural institutions are using their creativity to offer the kind of hope, inspiration, and edification that institutions provided me when I was a thin kid in the lobby of the public, of the public with Oscar's predecessor looking at me and thinking, this is my audience. This is my audience. And these are the reasons why, at the Ford Foundation, we have supported the work of a vast array of artists and arts institutions from the day we were founded. We've sought to nurture expression and creativity in ways that celebrate human imagination in all its diversity and in, and in, and in all its potential to change us. And these are the reasons why today, today at Ford, we've launched a new wave of arts programs, ranging from building new spaces, Elsie McCabe is here, spaces which reflect the new face of America, to becoming one of the largest funders of documentary films in the world, the largest funder of social justice documentary films in the world. And my hope is that today's conversation will provide us with fresh perspectives on how we can continue these efforts, how we can work with all of you. Now, we're here to mark this institution's enduring support for the arts and culture, and that's a great reason to be here. But we're here for what I think of as a more important reason. And that is, we're here to reaffirm the essential role that the artistic community plays in spurring social change. And to push ourselves, to push ourselves to reimagine how arts and culture can shape our communities, can shape our countries, can shape our shared future. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of that. And now I want to introduce my friend. I want to introduce you to the man behind Fresh Angle, our dynamic vice president for all our cultural work, all our education work, Darren Walker. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Ford Foundation. Good morning. Thank you all so much. It is really a privilege for me to look around this room and see an assembly of such amazing creative leaders and so many people I have known for so long and admired for so long. I'm thrilled that you're here. We've got an impressive lineup of artists 
and culture carriers who will bring their perspectives as we explore the role of art, artists, cultural institutions, and social change in this moment of global transformation. And I would submit that it's not just transformation. We are seeing a real revolution. There is profound change around the globe. The world feels more tumultuous and more volatile. And while some may be confounded and even paralyzed by the rapid change, we at the Ford Foundation are in fact exhilarated by the opportunities these changes are presenting. We're not naive, however, and we know that the change that excites us, like the Roman god Janus, has two faces. The very technological innovations that we celebrate can unleash or undermine our ideals and aspirations for democracy and free expression. The global shifts that are benefiting other parts of the world to many Americans, a country which has unemployment of 9%, feels sort of destabilizing. And in spite of the clear social advances in many places, we know that women, ethnic, and religious minorities, and gays and lesbians are subjected to violence, discrimination, and exclusion. So what does all this have to do with art and artists and free expression? Artists and creative communities have throughout history been at the forefront of embracing change, of championing the excluded, of interpreting and translating the hopes, visions, and aspirations of people who often have no voice. Today, in a new revolutionary moment, once again, artists and arts organizations are taking risks and boldly engaging in the issues of our day. So here's the question. Are we making the most of the creative energy being unleashed in this revolutionary moment? Are we using the power of art and culture to bring greater justice in the world? This is what we're going to explore today. As Louise said, the Ford Foundation has a rich legacy, 75 years of support for creative people and creative institutions. And we're using this anniversary to explore the front lines across all of the Foundation's work. But today is about art and culture. We've got five amazing sessions and a group of remarkable leaders from all around the country and all around the world who are going to push us to think from fresh angles. Later this morning, we'll be exploring art, culture, and economics. The fabulous Vishaka Desai is going to facilitate a conversation about the impact of global economics on arts patronage and power. Afterwards, we'll have lunch with Rocco Landisman and Frank Rich, and I know what they're going to want to talk about, and you don't want to miss it. After lunch, we've got White Marble Metamorphosis. I love that name. Thank you, Communications. <laughs> We're going to hear from four culture mavericks working to transform their legacy institutions for the 21st century. That'll be moderated by Deborah Solomon. And later, Entertaining Justice, which asks the question, are documentary films destined to stay on the margins because of the tough subject matter they, de they deal with? Can they, should they, entertain us? A panel of award-winning filmmakers, including Laura Cordes, Michael Moore, and Spike Lee, will not only entertain us, they'll make us think. And we've got some sensational talent along the way. But first, to get things started, artists on the front lines. In the great tradition of Asa Hutchison, Paul Roberson, Marian Anderson, and many others, you're about to hear from artists tackling social issues around the world, in Latin America, the Middle East, Africa, and the United States. This conversation, which taps the zeitgeist and explores the role of artists in this moment of transformation, will be guided by the incomparable, the indefatigable, Charlie Rose coming up next. <laughs> 